What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about the newest version of D5 Render, version 2.1. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So this new version contains a nice collection of performance improvements as well as um, feature improvements having to do with the assets as well as a really interesting new development with the D5 widget. So you can see all the information about the new features contained in the new version of D5 Render in their forum post, which I will link to in the notes down below. Um, in addition, there's also um, a couple different posts about some of the different things that were added that we'll talk about in just a second. All right, so let's start off with our global illumination improvements. So basically what they've done, and they have like a detailed um, blog post in here about this, what they've done is they've improved their global illumination settings so that you get better results. So for example, if you go into their example video right here, um, you can see that um, they've, they've made some significant changes to this that are going to affect the way that your images are rendered. Now a lot of this is going to be under the hood, so notice how Notice how there's no denoising going on in this video, at least that's what they say. And so they've got a really interesting solution for this. And the solution is if we jump into the D5 GI blog post, so they've got this great blog post that talks about basically how rendering works when they're doing like path tracing, right? So they're basically taking light rays and they're bouncing them around inside of your scene and they're using that in order to generate an image. But the problem with that is there's tons of light rays in here that they're calculating, right? Like they know in here they're doing something like 12 billion light rays in this image. It takes more than three minutes to render. And the problem is there's just so many samples in order to try to get rid of the noise in here. The noise is basically things that haven't been 100% calculated yet. So the more calculations you do, the less noise you're going to have, right? So what they talk about is if you scroll down, um, they've got this hybrid GI solution. So it's really pretty cool. What they're doing is they're combining ray tracing and light probes. And basically each one of these probes is um, collecting light information inside of the scene, right? And we've seen this before, but the problem with that is it's not as accurate. Um, and so what they're doing is they're basically combining the light probes with the ray tracing. So they're putting those together in order to quickly calculate this. And so basically what they're doing is they're starting by using ray tracing for the first few bounces, then using the light probes. So this helps avoid the light leaking that can happen around the edges of the scene. That usually happens because the probes go outside of the space and you get light information from outside. So there's a lot more information in here about this um, that you can kind of look into. But basically what they're doing is they're improving their algorithm so, so that their uh, renders are going to be a lot faster is basically what this is going to do. So this is basically designed to speed up the speed at which your rendering takes um, inside of D5 Render. So I have a link to this article in the notes down below. Really excited to see where this goes. This is really an interesting solution to me. I'm not sure if it's common or not, but this is a great article talking about some of the challenges that they're facing and how they're trying to solve them. And then in one of the more interesting developments, at least to me, um, they've got what they're calling D5 Widget. And what D5 Widget is, is basically an extension module for D5 Render. So what they've got is they've got these different modules in here for advanced video rendering, for virtual reality, other things like that. And basically what it does is it gives you the ability to add extensions almost like you would in SketchUp, but to D5 Render. Right now, they've got some extensions that you can access from directly inside a D5, where you can toggle things on and off from the menu preference widget window. Um, but in the future, they're planning on uh, supporting widgets designed and uploaded by users. So what this does is this opens up D5 Render to the ability to have different plugins and extensions, kind of like you might see in SketchUp. So that's really exciting to me um, because what it does is it allows a lot more people to come up with solutions for the program. I haven't really seen too many um, rendering programs do this. So I'm really excited to see where this one could go. Um, if it's implemented properly, this could be a massive boost for D5 Render because it could add some functionalities that you just don't see anywhere else. So I'm, I'm not seeing anything about how exactly that's going to work, um, how the widget design will work, what software they did, what um, what coding language it would be built on or anything like that. Um, so more to come on that, but um, super excited to see where that goes. So they've also 
added customizable assets to their asset library. Basically what that means is that means that now there's vehicles where you can change the, uh, turn the lights on and off, you can change the vehicle color, as well as you can um, change the clothes of characters. So it's only certain characters, it's not all of them, but they've definitely added that dynamic functionality in here. All right, and so what you wanna do um, in order to access these is inside of the asset library. And what you wanna do is when you bring one of these in, like this car, for example, notice how we've got toggles on the right-hand side of the car now. So I can toggle the driver on and off if you want a driver in the car. You can also toggle the lights on and off. So you can see how you can turn on lights. Um, so you can see how the light sources are going to be on as well as the light that's being cast in here. You can actually adjust the intensity of those lights, which is pretty cool. And then you can also adjust the color of the car. So as of right now, it looks like you're kind of limited to this palette of colors, which honestly should be plenty, um, at least at the moment. Though um, I could see this going to like a color picker or something like that in the future. All right, so then same thing with this man sitting model. Um, so you can go into the cloth color right here, um, or the clothes color right here, click on that, and you can see how he's going to have different options for different colors for clothes. So it's not like super customizable, right? Like you can't pick from that color picker or anything like that yet, but you can adjust some of the characters. I will note that some of them seem to have it and some of them don't. So for example, I downloaded the Sophia model and she doesn't seem to have the clothes um, option in here for the different colors. So I'm not really sure what delineates those right now inside of the D5 render assets. Um, I'm not 100% clear on that. You may just have to download a couple and try them. But overall, the extra customizability is really nice inside of D5. And so another under the hood improvement that's really gonna give you better performance is their smoothness improvement. So basically this is designed to make your scenes run more quickly. And it does that in a few different ways. So for example, and you can get into this more in in depth if you really want to look at it. But basically what it's doing is using texture streaming. And really what that means is that means that it's only loading the texture maps that it needs um, when the camera is looking at them. Um, other textures are stored temporarily, but this one is being used to make sure that you're not overloading on materials. So in addition, they're doing things with the way the lights are loaded. So if you look at this scene that they have right here, right, they've got a ton of lights in the background. But if you look at the ones in the background, they're being kind of combined into more of like a singular light. So notice what it's doing is it's basically taking those lights, splitting them into groups, and then kind of sampling them um, so that you're not necessarily loading every single thing. Um, that's going to significantly improve your load time. So just a lot of smart things in here to try to make, um, to make D5 faster. So I love the way that they're looking for solutions on a lot of this stuff. And so I'm really excited to see where this goes in the future because this could make, this could make a massive difference when it comes to how fast things are calculated in D5. So I will link to some D5 tutorials on this page if you want to learn how to use the program. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this new version, um, the new features contained inside of it? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.